word and sacrament. Let us call to mind our sins. Please be seated. Like the deer longs for flowing streams, so longs my soul for you, O God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. O send out your light and your truth, that they may lead me. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. May we come to your altar, O God, the God of our salvation, Lord, have mercy. The Confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, Have mercy on us. Forgive what we have been. Amend what we are. And direct what we shall be, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from all our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us stand.
with you. O oh God, for as much as without you, we are not able to please you. Mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 25, verse 1 to 9. Yahweh, you are my God. I shall praise you to the heights. I shall praise your name. For you have accomplished marvels, plans long conceived faithfully, firmly. For you have made the town a heap of stones, the fortified city the ruin. The foreigner's citadel is a city no longer. It will never be rebuilt. Hence, mighty peoples will honor you. The city of pitiless nations hold you in awe. For you have been a refuge for the weak, a refuge for the needy in distress, a shelter from the storm, shade from the heat, for the breath of the pitiness is like a winter storm. Like heat in a dry land, you calm the foreigners' tumult. As heat under the shadow of a cloud, so the song of the pitiness dies away. On this mountain, for all peoples, Yahweh, Sabaoth, is preparing a banquet of rich food, a banquet of fine wines, of succulent food, of well-strained wines. On this mountain, he has destroyed the veil which used to veil all peoples, the poor enveloping all nations. He has destroyed death forever. Not Yahweh has wiped away the tears from every cheek, he has taken his people's shame away everywhere on earth. For Yahweh has spoken. And on that day, it will be said, Look, this is our God. In him we put our hope that he should save us. This is Yahweh. We put our hope in him. Let us exult and rejoice since he has saved us. That is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand.
The second reading is taken from the book of Philippians, chapters 4, verses 1 to 9. So then, my brothers and dear friends, who I miss so much, my joy and my crown, hold firm in the Lord, dear friends. I urge Yodia and Alaj Syntyge to come to agreement with each other in the Lord, and I ask you, Syzygus, really to be a partner and help them. These women have struggled hard for the gospel with me, along with Clement and all other fellow workers whose names are written in the book of life. Always be joyful. Then in the Lord, I repeat, be joyful. Let your good sense be obvious to everybody. The Lord is near. Never worry about anything, but tell God all your desires of every kind in prayer and petition, sought through with gratitude. And the peace of God, which is beyond our understanding, will guard your hearts and your thoughts in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, let your minds be filled with everything that is true, everything that is honorable, everything that is upright and pure everything that we love and admire, with whatever is good and praiseworthy. Keep doing everything you learned from me and were told by me and have heard or seen me doing. Then a God, the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand.
Holy Gospel, O Lord, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, and you have revealed to us the mysteries of the kingdom. With you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Saint Matthew. And Jesus began to speak to them in parables once again. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a feast for his son's wedding. He sent his servants to call those who had been invited, but they would not come. Next, he sent some more servants with the words, tell those who have been invited, look, my banquet is all prepared. My oxen and fatted cattle have been slaughtered. Everything is ready. Come to the wedding. But they, would, but they were not interested. One went off to his farm, another to his business. And the rest seized his servants, maltreated them and killed them. The king was furious. He dispatched his troops and destroyed those murderers and burned their towns. Then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but as those who were invited proved to be unworthy, go to the main crossroads and invite everyone you can find to come to the wedding. So the servants went out onto the road and collected together everyone they could find, bad and good alike. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. When the king came in to look at the guests, he noticed one man who was not wearing a wedding garment and said to him, how did you get in here, my friend, without a wedding garment? And the man was silent. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind his hand and foot and throw him into the darkness outside where there will be weeping and grinding of teeth. For many are invited, but not all are chosen. This is the gospel of Christ our Lord. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth <coughs> and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable unto you, O Lord. Amen. Please be seated. <coughs> Very good morning to all of you. Uh, my type A flu has been cured, so rest assured. It's only that uh, the irritation uh, and the cough continues because it developed into an allergy 
to cool air and wind. And every one of you know that the uh, chapel here is especially cold and the uh, air conditioning is especially powerful. So do bear with my cough and don't be afraid. You know, it, 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 it will not be uh, infecting you, all right? So I've been taking a lot of Chinese medicine, but the Chinese medical doctor says no more. Otherwise, it'll be so negative to you, you develop something else. So do be patient. And I'll keep this on because then I won't be breathing in the cold air. Now, this is a very <coughs> interesting <coughs> version of the parable of the wedding feast. You will find that in the other Gospels, when they repeat this parable, there was no indication of those in those parables that those who were not invited not only did not come, but in this version, they attacked and killed the king's messengers. And we are told that the king sent out his messengers twice. The first time, those invited ignored the messengers. The second time, they felt this king was very troublesome. And so they killed his messengers who went out to invite them. And then what did the king did do? He sent out his soldiers and attacked these murderers. Not only did he kill them, but he destroyed everything they had. And then, of course, the king then told his servants to go and invite others who were not originally invited, the commoners, the commoners. And so they came. But then, one among these commoners, not knowing his manners, came without his wedding gown. And so when the king saw him and said, weren't you invited to the wedding feast? Didn't you know that this is a wedding feast? So why aren't you dressed appropriately? And of course, he was kicked out. And then the king and Jesus said, many will be invited but only a few are chosen. Now, let me explain this last part about appropriateness of what you wear. Now, at St. John's College, and in Cambridge and Oxford, where I studied, in Cambridge in particular, at high table, you have to dress accordingly. So the first time I was in Cambridge, and I went to high table, uh, I had to wear a tuxedo, but then I was, I didn't know how to tie a bow tie. So I wore a clipped on bow tie. And the chief butler was standing at the main door and he says, Chong, stand aside, take off that ugly clip on bow tie. And he gave me, he had many prepared because there were other students who had the clip on ones. <coughs> And he gave it to me. I didn't know how to tie it. And so immediately he taught me how to tie it, and I tied it. Although it was ugly, it was a tied-on bow tie, and I was allowed into high table. And so at St. John's College, Hong Kong U now, we do the same thing. Right? Except we don't wear the bow tie, we wear a tie, a college tie. And at uh, postgraduate high table, where... Uh, uh, other postgraduates who are not St. Johnians were invited to high table. There was one student who refused to wear a tie. He said, it's too formal. I said, then you stay out and don't come in, all right? Because we are very strict. And the kingdom of God is even stricter. Not only were those without wedding garments not allowed in, they were tied hand and foot and thrown out. And those who originally were <coughs> invited, but who violently attacked the messengers and killed them, the king attacked them and destroyed everything they had. And in a way, what you have here in this parable is what we call the violence, the violence of the theology of salvation. 
The violence is not only in the judgment of sinners, but the violence, the judgment that God imposes, even on those who are called by God to serve his purpose, but when they either ignore it or when they have overdone it and tried to seize the kingdom of God, they too will be punished. And this is illustrated in Isaiah chapter 25, the Old Testament lesson. Now, if you have a very good commentary, especially a historical commentary, you will find that Isaiah in chapter 25 was actually prophesying against Assyria. Against Assyria. Now, what happened? Well, According to the understanding of the prophet Isaiah, God had called the nation of Assyria to act as God's instrument of punishment against his own people, against Israel. Because Israel has abandoned God and had chosen to worship other gods. And if you read the prophet Hosea, not only did they abandon God, they began to bully the weak, especially the orphans and the widows. And these leaders of Israel and the, the powerful landowners, they began to seize the property of the widows to expand their own power. And Assyria was chosen by God to punish the northern kingdom of Israel. But the only problem was this. In carrying out what God gave them the mandate to do, to punish Israel, Assyria went beyond that mandate. And not merely to punish, but to destroy and to carry out a genocide of destruction. And one wonders today, in the war between Hamas and Israel, where the both of them has exceeded, and the violence we see on both sides will surely bring about God's punishment on the perpetrators of violence, regardless of who they are, not only in Israel and Palestine, but around the world. And this is what we are reminded. Regardless of how we carry out God's instructions, we are told that the economy of violence is unacceptable. The economy of violence is unacceptable. And what is the economy of violence in our case? None of us carry guns. None of us carry knives, and Hong Kong is not at battle with the rest of the world. But the economy of violence can exist in human relationships, within a family. Now let me use an example. Let me use an example. Very many of us, in fact, in fact all of us, love our children very much, isn't it? Right? Not only because when they are small, you know, they're big eyes, you know, like him, you know, smiley face, chubby face, you know, like, uh, oh, where is she? All right? Uh, you know, and, and when you look at them, they give you that smile, and they can melt your hearts, isn't it? All right? Now, my problem is I've always considered myself a very bad father. I am lousy at parenting. So I never had the courage to have children. All right? Because my wife says I will spoil them. But on the other hand, my wife is a very strict disciplinarian. And so she's the exact opposite of me. And, and because we fear that, we are afraid that our children will grow up being schizophrenic. You know? You know, a father who has no demands on his children and a mother who has. So we decided not to have children. But let us come back to your case. All right? Now, 
all of you love your children very much. That's undoubted. Because I see all of you, especially when you know, they, they, they are about to go to school. I've even been asked by parents to write recommendations for <coughs> kindergarten students. All right, so it's how desperate and how loving you are to help them find a good school. Not only do I write recommendations for kindergartens, I've also written letters for preschool groups at the YMCA in Salisbury Road. All right? And of course, I get lots of uh, 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 requests to write recommendations for primary school and also secondary school and even universities. All right? Recently, I've been asked by one of my students to write a recommendation to Cambridge University, to one of the colleges of residence. But that's okay, you know. We love our children so much that we would even beg not only the priest to write, no, you don't have to beg me. All you need to do is to let me know. I'll write it, all right? But some of us really do beg not only the priest to write the recommendations, but also to the schools. I mean, uh, I've seen parents who go knocking on doors. You know, uh, there is a point where if your children couldn't get in in the first round, there's a second round called the knock door round, which you could then go to school just in case, you know, uh, 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 some parent does uh, uh, use uh, DBS as a safeguard, but when Kuwait accepts them, they fly over there. All right, so, so the end result is there are some vacancies here. Uh, during the uh, second round, and so parents do go knocking on doors, all right? And, but the point is this. The love you have for your children is undoubted. But the problem is this. That love can sometimes turn into demands. Because you work so hard to get your kid educated and you expect your kid to understand that and reciprocate by studying hard. But if they don't meet your expectations, what happens? You lose your patience. When there are little kids like that and they don't understand, you know, and they don't do what you do, most of the time you don't get angry because you understand that they don't understand. But when they begin to understand and they don't do what you expect them to do, you lose your patience. And that is the violence that children experience. Whether it is the demands that you make on them when they fail to do their homework properly. All right? I've heard parents and kids tell me that when they learn how to write Chinese, all right, uh, there'll be 50 words in total, you know, uh, five new words 10 times. But because the kid couldn't write it properly, the parents would erase it and make them write again. And so in the end, they write 300 times, that 50 words, until they could write properly. But, but you forget part of the fault is yours. And what is that fault? We put them to school too early. All right? We put them to school too early. And if it is a girl, now here God is rather biased. All right? If it is a girl, chances are she will be more mature mentally than the boys, all right, than the boys. And so a girl would have a tendency to have a better language ability and also better de dexterity. But if it's a boy, and this is where God is rather biased, the boy is a lot slower also because they get so pampered by their parents and grandparents, especially grandparents, all right? So they tend to lag behind the girls of the same age. 
Now, I may be wrong, but that's my observation. And the, the violence that we impose of, on them at the very beginning of their education is to tell them that you are a failure. You are a failure. Every time we are not satisfied with the way they write, and mind you, three, four years old, how can they write? They, they couldn't even pick up the chopsticks. All right? They couldn't even pick up the spoon, and they're expected to pick up a pencil and write properly. And we tell them to rewrite and rewrite and rewrite that they get so fed up that they don't want to learn anymore. No wonder so many of our elite schools, we have children who hate Chinese and are better at English, precisely because of the experience of violence that they had from parents, making them rewrite Chinese words over and over again when they themselves couldn't even control their pencil properly or hold it properly. And this is a reminder to us that this parable reminds us of that violence. Not only when they begin to learn how to read and write, but also as they grow older, we make demands on them. And even when they're not feeling well, we make demands on them. And after taking medicine, and they feel so drowsy, and they feel so tired, that the next day they couldn't get up. And we scold them, you better go to school, you're bloody lazy. And we forget ourselves when we were young, what it was like, isn't it? The older we become, the more we forget how weak and sometimes how unreasonable our parents are. Because as we grow older, our love for our children becomes so strong that we want them to be like us. And parents have a tendency to rewrite their own experience as a child, that they were always perfect. My father is a classic example. Because whenever my father told me, you know, when I was young, I was so hardworking. And then, of course, my grandmother was sitting right next to him, would stare at him, uh, telling bullshit stories again. You know how naughty your father was? And that's what my grandmother would tell me. And then, of course, my father would then remember and then retell that story. Our problem, the second kind of violence that we as parents have, is that we forget our own experience of growing up and the pains that we expect that we experience. And especially when we could not understand why our parents, who were once a child, forget how difficult it is for a child to grow up, especially now in Hong Kong. And especially now when the competition to get into good school and to good universities is getting tougher and tougher. Not only because they are more and more expensive, but because of the competition, because the rest of the poorer nations are catching up and their children are becoming better and better. Not only non-locals, but also locals. Within China itself, the competition is so great because in the second and third zone, schools have gotten better. And those children are competing with the children who grew up in the cities along the coast for the best schools. The lesson we are reminded today is that do not allow the economy of violence that result from the love that you have, not only for, from your children, but from everyone else. Forget what it means to love and to love humbly 
and to love patiently. But most importantly, to love visibly. How many of us fail to show our children physically and visibly that love? We say we love them, but how much time do you spend with them? How much time do you spend talking with them? You may spend your time with them while you're watching your television or while you're watching your mobile phone or while you're watching your tablet, the Hang Seng Index and the Nikkei Index and the New York uh, uh, Wall Street Index, or you may be doing your work at home. So you may be there physically, but you are not present. How often when you're with your children, do you talk to them? Most often we talk to them. You listen to me. I'm talking to you. But we do not talk with them. You may say, hey, you know, uh, Eric is playing around with prepositions. But I'm not. The fact that we talk to our children, commanding them, telling them what they should do, but we don't talk to them precisely because we do not listen to them. How often do children get angry with their parents and become alienated that so often they want to run away? How so often they feel parents are unreasonable. They say they love me, but they don't show me and I do not feel it. So even when we talk with them, we have to make sure that our words are not empty because those words that we talk to them with must be accompanied by real acts of love, by real acts of acceptance, by real acts of understanding by real acts of patience. Being a child today is more difficult than being a child in your time and especially in my time. Because the world now has advanced in leaps and bounds. And there are so many more temptations that the child has. The mobile phone you give them, the tablets, the activities in schools. Not only that, they are also being bombarded with counterculture that oftentimes runs opposite of what you teach them. And that's the issue. Have you taught them? You may have given them an education, but have you yourself took up the responsibility to educate them? You may have sent them to a very good school to get educated, but their primary education is at home. Have you yourself taken up the role of educating them to be a real human person who not only knows how to think for themselves, but also to think for others, who knows not only his own responsibility to himself or herself, but also the responsibility he bears for others. And more importantly, have you helped them to find themselves? Amen.
Let us stand. And with the words of the Nicene Creed, let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father (coughs) worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. The prayers of intercession. Lord, your mercy reaches to the heavens. Your goodness knows no end. And let your love and peace be known among us as we approach you in prayer. We give thanks for our faith and pray for all who struggle in the work of the gospel, for those who preach the word and administer the sacraments. We We pray pray for for gentleness gentleness and and graciousness in our our mission and and outreach. Remember remember those those who work work among among the outcasts and the poor. We pray pray for for all who strive to to bring bring in your peace. Lord, by your power and your presence, provide provide us us with peace. We pray for all troubled areas of our world, especially in Gaza, West Bank, Israel, Ukraine, Afghanistan, that wars may cease and that we may find a lasting peace. We pray for the peacemakers of our world. We remember remember all who have have suffered suffered through war, all all who have been injured, all who have lost loved ones. We pray for those whose memories are scarred by violence. Lord, by your power and your presence, provide us with peace. We pray that our homes may be places of peace and healing. We pray for all who are suffering from broken relationships, We pray for reconciliations and healing where peoples are divided, that we may live at peace with all people. Lord, by your power and your presence, provide us with peace. We pray for all who are distressed, for the over-anxious and the fearful, for the troubled in body, mind or spirit, for all who are over-tense or uptight, for all who find it hard to relax or let go. We pray for all whose peace is disturbed by the violence or carelessness of the others, that we may know your presence and the peace that you offer. Lord, by your power and your presence, provide us with peace. We give thanks for all who have passed through death and are at peace in your nearer presence. We pray for friends and loved ones departed from us, especially for May we with them share in the peace of your everlasting kingdom. Lord, by your power and your presence, provide us with peace. And now we pray 
with thanksgiving for our brother Matthew. And in our prayers, let us also remember his family and everyone who have given their time and hearts to search for him. Let us pray. We give thanks for the safe return for our brother Matthew, for his reconciliation with his family, especially his physical healing and the healing of wounds resulting from past angry words, misunderstanding, impatience, and failure to listen to each other. And now in this moment, you can either offer up your prayers of thanksgiving in silence, or if you want to, to share those prayers with us. Remember in our prayers not only to pray for Matthew and his family, but also for us and our relationships with our children. Father, we give thanks for all faithful and fervent prayers for Matthew's safe return and healing, his parents for not giving up hope during their days of pain, anxiety, and loneliness, for all fire and emergency services, police, and volunteers, including the Assistan Boys School Old Boys, the Assistan Boys School Scout Troops, and the Dragon Boat Race Team, and all classmates who gave their time and hearts and strength to search for him without giving up hope. Lord, by your power and your presence, we praise you and truly thank you for your mercy. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us stand. Peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father. Peace from His Son, Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd. Peace from the Holy Spirit, the Life Giver. The peace of the triune God be always with you and also with you. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace, peace be with you. Peace, peace. <coughs> Please be seated. We will now have the anthem sung by the choir.
Continually with this bread and wine, which satisfy all hunger, your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> Let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, give us the bread of everlasting life and make us branches of the true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. And now we give you thanks, most gracious God, holy 
an undivided trinity because you have given us the light of the knowledge of God in the face of Jesus Christ that we may grow into your likeness and be changed from glory to glory and therefore we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Saviour and Redeemer of the world. In Him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, 
Do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and the blood of his new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of our Lord, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, that by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. by the power of the Spirit. Let us therefore pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread.
the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. the body of Christ. The blood of Christ. Now we invite any brothers and sisters, if you have been baptized, whether as a Catholic or as a Protestant or an Anglican, to come forward and receive Holy Communion. If you have not been baptized, but if you want to receive a blessing, come forward and cross your arms and I will bless you.
Let us pray. Holy and blessed God, you have fed us with the body and blood of your Son and filled us with your Holy Spirit. May we honour you, not only with our lips, but in lives dedicated to the service and love of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Faithful God, may we who share this banquet glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, our salvation, life and hope, who reigns as Lord now and forever. Amen. Let us stand. The blessing. Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are those of gentle spirit, they shall inherit the land. Blessed are you who hunger now, and you will be satisfied. Blessed are those of gentle spirit, they shall inherit the earth. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Go in the peace of Christ to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. We will now have the announcements. Hi, good morning everybody. It's uh, morning. We are so happy to see many of you here. And um, newcomers, I, I think there are some newcomers, right? Um, I've uh, I've got the names, uh, Marco, Bonnie, even, and uh, all right. Uh, can you please stand up so we can, yeah, we can know you. And any, any more newcomers today? Um, and any, any other who are here for the first time? I believe there the is The DBS, others, uh, right. grade eight students, yeah. yeah so stand up and let us Stand up here. so that we can, yeah. uh, you know, all right. thank you. Yes, welcome. So yes, we are. Uh, we have uh, regular church services every Sunday, ten thirty, and so we hope to see you all yeah, in the in, in the coming weeks. All right, uh, church news. Uh, just uh, some brief. I think uh, most of them you can read it yourself. And um, as usual, Sunday school, you know, has already started. I would like to remind all of the students that please bring your children to the toilet first before you come. And also, uh, 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 also if if you have with you some toys and books, it would be appreciated if you can keep them for keep it for them first and so that they won't bring it to the class so uh, no uh, in order for them to be trained to be a community of the church so uh, uh, they have to um, yeah they, they, they cannot bring their toys and books with them in the classrooms and uh, yes also uh, so um, as usual we have of course the mother's fellowship and the um, uh, Pilgrimage, uh, the Johanna studies is uh, continues. So, if you want to see the details, please uh, note in, in in the announcement. Uh, I mean, in, in the sheet news yourself. See it for yourself. And what else? Let's see. Uh, the dinner. Yes, if you have registered on the twenty third of November, please don't forget to go. October, not November, sorry, no, October. October 23rd. Please remember to go. 
And, and also, uh, as you know that every year our mother church, Holy Trinity Cathedral, they have an, uh, uh, an annual sort of like the uh, DBS uh, school fate. They have a school fun fair every year. So um, this year it would be held on the um, 4th of November. And if you have gifts to donate, I, I, uh, Lincoln is the chairman of the organizing committee this year. And yes, if you have any gifts or any things that you can sponsor, please uh, contact Lincoln. And um, nothing like, right. okay, thank you very much. All right. Uh, uh, a reminder, this, this Sunday, today, is the last day to register for baptism and confirmation classes, right? The information is found on page 22, all right? So if you are later than today, uh, we will close registration uh, because you won't be able to catch up uh, with your readings and the watching of the videos. Uh, and also, for those of you who are... Who are here for the first time, especially DBS students, uh, on page 22, right, 22 to 27 is a rather detailed uh, introduction of what the Anglican Church right, believes in. All right? So you can read from that as well. Uh, right, and that's it. Let's stand up for the recessional hymn.